Coming up on Spotlight, we find out how an all-star cast brought to life the cult Alan Moore comic book in V for Vendetta. We also check out the Rainswept premiere and show you why this new blockbuster should prove anything but a washout. Set in a dystopian future, Britain is in the grip of a fascist dictatorship enforced by secret policemen and stormtroopers. The only hope is a masked crusader known only as V, a shadowy freedom fighter with a mission to destroy the government and free his fellow citizens. After his performances as the Matrix's Mr. Nasty, Hugo Weaving finally gets to play a hero in the form of master anarchist V. He's a very complex character. Uh, he's a man who's been tortured uh, and experimented on by uh, particular individuals who later on become head of the government of the day. And as a result of that torture, he decides to, or he's compelled to, uh, kill them. So he's very uh, damaged and, and twisted and, uh, and physically damaged as well. He's being burnt in a fire. What comes is better than what came before. There's another side to his character that um, believes very strongly that the world in which he lives, which is set in the, in the near future in this country, uh, is one where the people are being held, uh, and they're being oppressed by their government, and that they should, the government should be responsible to them. What comes is better than what came before. He has very strong political beliefs. And round all that, he's a, he's a physically kind of unusual character in, in a mask uh, and a cape and uh, throws knives with uh, great precision and uh, is quite an extraordinary, um, charismatic, uh, fast-talking man. Oh, oh, I do believe. Natalie Portman plays Weaving's co-star Evie Hammond as an unlikely ally to V in his quest to rid Britain of its ugly regime. We all like to imagine ourselves if we were in an oppressive government as resisting and, and being really active and you see that she's really passive in the beginning and she's just trying to live her life and be under the radar and be, you know, stay safe. English writer, actor and comedian Stephen Fry plays the role of Dietrich, a suppressed gay presenter who eventually sides with V to rebel against the state. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What is that you're making? We call it Iggy in the Basket. My mum used to make them. This is weird. What? The first morning I was with him, he made me eggs just like this. Really? I play a character called Gordon Dietrich, a friend of one of the uh, people who work in the... TV company played by Natalie Portman, uh, who is the sort of heroine of the film, um, and uh, she goes to my house because she's under threat. There's an obvious explanation. There is? Yes, Evie. I am V. At last you know the truth. She's very afraid. I think she lives through her fear, which I think is common in the society and also, you know, sort of reflects a lot of... Um, the sort of politicking that's that's happening in our world today, sort of fear-based um, politicking that you should be afraid of everything. Every day that man remains free is one more failure. 347 days, gentlemen. 347 failures! Chancellor, we do not have the adequate force. We are being buried beneath the avalanche of your inadequacies, Mr. Creedy! She goes from being this passive person to sort of, by chance, ending up with V, sort of not by her own doing and not being happy about it. And then through her imprisonment, she sort of learns um, how to face her fear and that, that, that overcoming that fear is the most important for, for her own integrity. I'm instructed to inform you that you have been convicted by special tribunal. 
and that unless you are ready to offer your cooperation, you are to be executed. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. Are you ready to cooperate? No. Very well. Escort Miss Hammond back to her cell. Arrange a detail of six men and take her out behind the chemical shed and shoot her. Creators of the Matrix trilogy, the Wachowski brothers, teamed up with their former producer, Joel Silver, to make another action movie with as much brains as brawn. It is an action film, and it does have a lot of action elements, but it isn't a pure action film. There's a lot of ideas that take it above that. But what we learned when we made The Matrix is that people are not looking just for action. I mean, they want more. They want something more. They want ideas. And, and the, the, the original comic book wa was a political thriller. I'll get it. Eric Finch? Yeah. How many went out? So far we count eight boxcars, several hundred thousand at least. Christ. I want anyone caught with one of those masks arrested. Give me the money! Give me the money! We're under siege here. Whole city's gone mad. This is exactly what he wants. What? Anarchy in the UK! Chaos. I mean, V is a superhero. He's a aberrant superhero but he is a superhero i mean he has superpowers practically i mean not he can't fly or he can't he can't you know he's not impervious to bullets even though he gets shot a lot in the movie and kind of survives i guess more than most but he That's has great skill with his knives and he's great skill with deception and he he understands how to how to get in and out of places with nobody really seeing or being aware of him i mean he has tremendous you know you know, abilities that, whether well, they're magic, uh, they're just really cool. He put masks on all of us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shoot you! Please! Oh, shoot you! Please! Oh, Please! Nobody move! You're wearing a mask, get down on your knees, now! Get the masks off. Having assisted on such blockbusters as Star Wars, Attack of the Clones, and the Matrix trilogy, V for Vendetta sees James McTeague make his debut as director. It's, it's very sort of complex, the story of V for Vendetta, because on one hand, you have like the, the lead character who is very altruistic and thinks he can like um, bring about great change, you know, within the government by making the people come together and making them realize how the government has you know somehow got it out of control because they're giving them their sort of bread and circuses every day but then you know he has this great moral ambiguity which is on the other hand he has this murderous vendetta about everyone who's ever done anything wrong to him The idea of a terrorist who's a freedom fighter, which again, you know, one man's terrorist, other man's freedom fighter, was an intriguing idea for a superhero to Alan and, and, and David. And, and I think that by transplanting him into a post 9-11 world and to bring him into a society where one can question the political philosophy of of our time um but at the same time it does work i mean it's an anti-fascist story anti-holocaust story i mean it, it works for for anybody who wants to see it and that's the great thing about the wachowski brothers is that when they write a project they don't they don't clarify what the audience is seeing with a specific point of view they leave the audience to determine how they want to interpret the material so I think that it's a politically charged 
movie, but it's up to the audience to figure what that means. Come, come to me. Coming up after the break, we'll be heading to the premiere of the film as well as getting the inside look at life behind the scenes. Just a Ticket is the show for the best new films each and every week. We watch them all so we can match you to the films that fit. And when the stars start talking, we're there listening. Just the ticket every night at 6 and 11. Only on Eat Cinema. Oh, we've got to eat lots of blueberries. Or is it pomegranates this week? Keep the muffin tops at bay. Yeah. A lot can happen in a week, so don't miss a thing with Grazia. Just one pound this week. They found her under the shower using an ordinary colour care system. She's fading fast. What do we do? Nurse. We put her on a course of VO5 Fade Defy shampoo, conditioner, and daily color lock to prolong her hair color. Good answer. Have you brought your sample, Miss Pierce? Hmm. VO5 has dramatically reduced your color fade. If only you'd come to me first. How about lunch? Sure. New Alberto VO5 Fade Defy for vitally alive hair. Close your eyes. Listen to your heart and think. Come on, do yourself a favor and think big. All this from 7594. New Grande Printer. Open your eyes. Volvic. Filtered through layers of volcanic rock to fill you with volcanicity. In 1976, two soldiers from a British Army expedition reached the summit of Everest. 30 years on, we're back. This time, we're taking on the notoriously difficult West Ridge, a route no British team has succeeded in climbing before. Why the West Ridge of Everest? Well, we as soldiers need to be able to make decisions in difficult situations, and this expedition offers the ultimate environment. The planning, the teamwork, the physical fitness required are the same as many of the things we do today. So the Army is in a perfect position to attempt this, but more importantly, bring back the experiences gained from it. There are more people that have been to the moon than have summited Everest by the West Ridge. of the Wachowski brothers. We're going to slide the coin. To follow in our footsteps, go to armyoneverest.mod.uk. Today on Spotlight, we're getting the lowdown on V for Vendetta, the latest film from the mind of Alan Moore and the pens of the Wachowski brothers. We will also be heading down to a very wet Leicester Square for the premiere to speak to the stars of the film. Set against the futuristic landscape of a totalitarian Britain, the film tells the story of cult comic book character V and his struggles against the British government. Ever since her role as the hitman's protégé in Leon, Natalie Portman has been a dynamic actress, but her latest role as Evie was her most challenging yet. 
Please. You've been formally charged with three counts of murder, the bombing of government property, conspiracy to commit terrorism, treason, and sedition. The penalty for which is death by firing squad. We were so fortunate to have Natalie Portman in the movie. I mean, she is just glorious. I mean, she is just an incredible girl, an unbelievable actress, so beautiful. I mean, and she went through such hell in the movie. It was a rough performance because, I mean, she has to have an arc. I mean, she goes from being this kind of normal, everyday, you know, kind of PA at a television studio to a revolutionary. And you see her go through that process. I mean, she gets her head shaved. I mean, she, those scenes where she's dealing with kind of squalor, she's shooting them in kind of squalor. And she does it with such grace and with such skill. Are you ready to cooperate? No. I think of actors of her generation, she's by far, you know, like the most in intelligent. She has like... She's completely professional and she looks luminous. But, you know, more than anything, I think, is her fearlessness, you know. It's, you know, it's not like a usual film. It's not like you, you have, a, you know, another lead character that you're playing off that, you know, is, has a human face for a start. I think it was probably more difficult in many ways for Natalie than it was for me because she yeah she she had uh, she couldn't see my eyes at all i mean i could see her uh, but she couldn't see the eyes so she had to yeah she had to respond to i suppose the emotions and the voice in the way that you do when you watch the film um, but sometimes i i felt very sorry for her <laughs> natalie's an absolute dream to work with i can say this with uh, full knowledge that that always makes people throw up when they hear how, how gorgeous and super their fellow actors are, but she truly is. She's she's a phenomenon, you know. I mean, she's been doing it since she was a an egg in the womb, virtually, and um, she's now still in it. She's what she's seven or eight or something, and um, and she's just a brilliant, brilliant actress. Mm, is utterly charming and very sweet natured and kind and awfully good in bed as well. Mm. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. What is that you're making? We call it Iggy in the Basket. My mum used to make them. This is weird. What? The first morning I was with him, he made me eggs just like this. Really? I swear. That is a strange coincidence. Although, there's an obvious explanation. There is? Yes, Evie. I am V. At last you know the truth. You're stunned, I know. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that beneath this wrinkled, well-fed exterior there lies a dangerous killing machine with a fetish for Foxian masks. Viva la revolución. That is not funny, Gordon. Yeah, I know. I'm useless without a studio audience. Playing a super cool hero like V still managed to create some drawbacks for the film's star, Hugo Weaving. There's only so much that you can get from this. Um, so you need to convey a lot through through voice as well. Sustaining fortune with his burnished steel, which smoked with bloody execution. But there are small movements that you can use with this sometimes that work very well. S small, f little fluid movements somehow keep it, give it a life that it may not otherwise have. And sometimes in a wider shot, you can you can do some you know some some larger. Movements, but that's a very technical way of working with a mask, and it's kind of required me to think about it in that way. Hugo has a couple of things going for him. He has a theatre background, which was very, you know, important to the character. He has a great physicality as an actor, which is also going to be important, and he has a great voice. You know, and, I, and you know, knowing him from the Matrix films, you know, knowing what, you know, like what a fantastic actor he was, what a, you know, great human being he was, and how, you know, he would have to humanise that character. It just seemed like a, a good and easy choice to get Hugo to come in and play that character. The pressures of making a $50 million movie for the Wachowski brothers had no effect on first-time director James McTeague. 
Well, this was James' first movie. I mean, look, he's been on set since he was like four years old, James. So, I mean, he's been doing this forever. And he's worked on gigantic movies and some small movies, and he just knows the process so well. And he really was able to get great performances. He really, he worked really, I mean, he'd known Natalie through the Star Wars films, but he really worked with her, and he worked with Hugo, and he worked with all the English actors. I mean, he really had an opportunity to really get a, 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 a beautiful, seamless, uh, performance from everybody. I mean, it, it seemed to be a perfect, you know, progression because James had had worked, you know, so long on these big movies and, ke you know, kept these big three ring circuses going. And this was a little smaller than that. So he was able to really focus on performances and on camera movement and and things that he really wanted to do. And I think that he brought a lot to the table and I think he did a wonderful job. After the filmmakers attempt to blow up some of London's most renowned landmarks on celluloid, the capital's weather had its revenge at the premiere. Not that this deterred the army of fans that had come out to see many of the film's stars, including Natalie Portman. I love her journey that she takes because it's very unusual. It's, you know, she becomes someone who believes that violence is, is an acceptable means to express her political opinions. But the way she gets there is pretty strange and surprising. You know, I mean, Natalie is magic. She's fantastic. Stephen Ray, Stephen Fry, John Hurt, Hugo Weaving. It's just great people. It's a, it's a great group and they, and they perform brilliantly. It really came out incredibly well. Stephen Fry is so just phenomenally intelligent and witty and beyond that is so humane that like even though he is the the brightest person I've encountered he never intimidates you he has this like amazing humanity that just makes you feel at home it just uh, upset all my expectations of what an action picture can be and uh, as I carried on reading I got more and more absorbed by it and more and more intrigued that, that Hollywood was going to make a movie which raised such dark, ambiguous and extraordinary questions about, about terrorism, about, about freedom, about, uh, you know, tyranny and I just, in London with explosions, with symbols of British democracy being blown to pieces, I just thought, fantastic, I want to be a part of this. It's an action film, but it's got a lot going for it in terms of its content. I thought this is one I'd like to be a part of. Every day that brings us closer to November, every day that man remains free is one more failure. 347 days, gentlemen. 347 failures! Chancellor, we do not have the adequate force. We are being buried beneath the avalanche of your inadequacies, Mr. Creedy! You'll find that when a movie is really good, people get on very well. When a movie's not good, and when the script isn't right, or when people are not happy, they, they might fight. But everybody was very good with this movie, because it's a great movie. Eric Finch? Yeah. What are you? I, I hope people will go see it, and because it really is a, is a smart film with a lot to think about, but it's also a great action film, too. It's a lot of fun. Do you know why you're here? Evie Hammond. You have been formally charged with conspiracy to commit treason, terrorism and sedition, the penalty for which is death by firing squad. You have one chance to save your life. You must tell us the identity or whereabouts of code name V. Are you ready to cooperate? No. People should not be afraid of their government. Government should be afraid of their people.